Hey friends, welcome back to Hot News. Thank you for letting me take Monday off. In case you didn't know, it was a public holiday here in South Africa known as Heritage Day, and most of the team took off, so we just weren't able to get a video out. Anyways, that doesn't matter now because we're back with hot news. And we want to give a big thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this video, my friends. Squarespace, for those of you who don't know, have websites, online stores, marketing tools, and analytics. And Squarespace is a great all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. But we'll talk about more of that at the end of the video. Which, by the way, in case you didn't notice, there's no ads on this video. It's only Squarespace. There'll be a link in the video description. But we'll talk about more of that at the end. And now let's just go into the hot news. Before we jump into the first article, actually I just want to remind you that anything that you're curious about what's going to be discussed in hot news is always linked as a timestamp in the description or in the pinned comment of the video so that way you don't have to wait to watch the whole video this isn't cable news you can actually search for what you want to see so check out the timestamps my friends but now let's get into the first article which is that anthem which is the new ea game that everybody's hyped for has a whole bunch of different release dates based on what amount of purchasing you've given ea so they have a whole breakdown on who gets access to the demo, which includes everybody, including the standard pre-order. But then early access to the first game on February 15th in 2019 only applies to Origin Access Premiere on the PC, but nowhere else. But if you want to play First Trial, which is 10 hours on February 15th, that you have to have EA access or Origin access on the Xbox One or the PC. But then if you want the full game, you standard pre-order the Legion of Dawn pre-order or Origin Access Premiere. So there's a whole complicated mess because EA just wants your money. And so if you give them money, they give you confusion. So hopefully you don't notice whether or not they're bamboozling you. But Origin Access Premiere actually does seem like a decent service if you know you're gonna purchase more than two games or two games at least on Origin, which would include Battlefield Five and Anthem in a year. You've already saved money because it's only $100 for a year. That's $120. If you're, if you're down with buying Origin games pre-order, then EA Access Premier is probably the cheapest way to do it. Not that I condone it, but just saying, it's feasibly, fiscally more conservative than actually buying the games. Next, Windows 10 has a bug that bricks uh, Broadwell E overclocking. So Broadwell E is the Skylake version of the high-end desktop chips, so the 6800K and the like and the like and the like, which is only eight cores, which the mainstream desktop Intel chips are gonna replace that anyways. In an attempt to actually patch out one of the Spectre variants, Spectre variant two with a whole bunch of codes, there's a bug in there that just doesn't allow you to overclock via the BIOS. It just nullifies your overclock so that you're not able to get better performance out of your CPU. It is a bug right now, and the only way to get rid of it is to undo the microcode update, and hopefully Intel will release a better one in the future. So rip if you actually need Broadwell E overclocking support. Don't, don't use this one, unless you need the security protection from the Spectre patch, in which case, you're between a rock and a hard place, my friend. And speaking of more sad news of being pushed back, deadlines being, I don't have a good segue for this, but Telltale Games is closing. They're the people behind Telltale Games, in case you're wondering, I've got nothing there. However, uh, the sad part about this is that they're only retaining 25 employees. So over 200 people appear to be losing their jobs. There are There is no severance pay. It just appears that they're getting the ax, which is really rough because you can definitely want games. People can be disappointed that The Walking Dead's next season of Telltale is not coming out or the Stranger Things Telltale game is not coming out, but real people lost jobs here. And that's a bummer, especially when you think a company is doing well and then it just all goes under. And then in news that I wasn't expecting, the iPhone XS Max is outselling the iPhone XS by a whole butt ton. So according to an Apple analyst from TF International Securities, they are saying that they're expecting the XS Max to outsell the 10S by a factor of three to four times, which is insane. Why? Well, I'll explain why. Even though it's the more expensive phone, you're getting something new. The excess brings nothing new to the table that consumers would actually want. 10 owners would buy the excess because it's bigger. That's what I wanted when I had an iPhone 10. I wanted the larger device. So you get something new, which is also the same argument that I have when it comes to the RTX series cards. The RTX 2080 is not going to sell because it's a 1080 with features that you don't need on top of it. However, the RTX 2080 Ti has a new experience for you. It is faster. It is the best graphics card on the market. Therefore, it is definitely, it has a value external to what's already on the market. That's the same with the XS Max. It is a giant iPhone of the 10 variety, which people wanted. However, the XS 
is useless. It's just a 10 refresh, which hardly anybody. I could see 10 owners switching to the XS Max, but not to the XS. Speaking of 2080 Ti's and all of that kind of stuff, there's a decent report out of Tech Power Up showing what it's like if you use an RTX 2080 Ti on different variants of PCI Express, showing how much does the bandwidth of the PCI Express slot actually limit the game's play on the video cards. That was a weird way of saying that. I'm sticking with it though. So at 1080p, we can see that a, a PCI Express 3.0 by four slot gives you 91% of its total performance. A by eight slot gives you 97% of its total performance and then by 16 is the full performance. However, you go to PCI Express 2.0 by 14, you get dropped down to 78%, which is a rough cookie to swallow. But as expected, as you increase resolutions from 1080p to 1440p to 4K, you limit the amount of bit bottleneck that happens on the bridge because then you become CPU bound, not GPU bound. So at 4K with the PCI Express by 4 3.0 slot, you're at 94% performance, 98 with the by 8 slot. And with PCI Express 2.0 by 4, you're at 86%. So there's definite performance loss when it comes to using a by 4 or by 8 slot with an RTX 2080 Ti, but I don't think it would be to the point that you would not use it if that's your only option. I don't, I don't see an instance where you have to use a by eight slot, but in case you do, you shouldn't really worry. You're only losing about 2%, which you have a 2080 Ti, what do you care? And then more RTX news. You guys have been sleeping on this video by Hardware Unbox. There's only 17,000 views on it, why the crap? Which is a comparison of HDR versus SDR on the RTX 20 series cards. I'm not gonna spoil the entire video for you, but it does indeed seem like Turing is bringing something new to the table that Pascal did not have when it comes to its performance on HDR. So please watch this freaking video. Links up there, links in the description. Why, why is this only, this is interesting stuff. This is why we can't have nice things, because you guys won't give this more than 20,000 views. What's up with that? Give it 50,000. Come on, my friends. And then in another video that you all are underappreciating, it's a video by Der Bauer of putting the RTX 2080 on dry ice and overclocking it. It appears that there's very little voltage scaling, so uh, you can take from that what you will. So it doesn't look like a shunt mod on the 20 series is gonna be that big of a difference changer like it was on the 10 series. But again, go watch the freaking video. Why do you guys sleep on these things? Links up there, links in the description. Hopefully you actually watch this once you see hot news, my friends. Do it after you're done watching hot news though. And then our last bit of RTX 20 series news, Galax has their Hall of Fame liquid cooled edition OC lab version, which is a whole way of saying a lot, but it's going for $1,800. It comes with the bits power all in one block for the GPU and likely is binned. Uh, they're not giving any information on that, but as far as I know, all of their o Hall of Fame lab editions have been highly binned to be really good overclockers. $1,800 for a really good graphics card is nothing to sneeze at. And then they also said if you buy it with uh, their Hall of Fame RAM, which is 4,600 megahertz, you can save $200 if you buy both the card and the RAM. If you buy two of the cards and two of the RAM, you save $400 and then $600 if you buy triples. Why would you need that? For overclocking world records, of course. This applies to probably very few of you who watch hot news. And then we have news from analysts expecting that AMD is definitely going to destroy Intel when it comes to their sales this year, claiming 30% market share in the consumer environment. The reason they're reporting this is because of the Intel supply shortage that we've been talking about for a few weeks here on Hot News with Intel not being able to meet the demands on their CPUs or the chipsets. Adoption rates are gonna be really low, whereas AMD can fully meet their needs, so they're gonna just take over the market. However, I think that was kind of happening anyways, as we've seen from other reports and even a poll we've done here on this channel. It's about a 50-50, even 60-40 in the way of AMD for how many people are buying new chips. When it comes to that, it seems like a lot more people are buying Zen CPUs, whereas the people who are on Intel are on Sandy Bridge up until Skylake. But very few people have adopted Kaby Lake or Coffee Lake. Coffee Lake is kind of an outlier because it brought in six cores. However, it doesn't seem like many people updated to that because they had already moved on to Ryzen for the six cores or the eight cores there. I, I'm not surprised by this. Are you? Do you think AMD is gonna take higher market share than that? Were you expecting this? Were you against this? I wanna know. What do you think of AMD taking over the CPU market? Then more 
AMD news, it appears that it looks like they might be coming out with new chipsets based on some USB IF registration. So it shows that they are potentially launching an A420 motherboard, which would make sense because they haven't launched the low end non overclocking motherboards with Ryzen 2. Then there's also the potential of a Z490 motherboard, which was rumored that about a while ago, it could be that they would launch with, with their 2800X CPU. That's a shot in the dark though. AMD's denied that they were ever coming out with this. And then there's the potential of an X499 motherboard launching sometime soon as well, which would be for the Threadripper chips to give it better VRM support, better power phase delivery, all that kind of stuff. Just making sure that the new Threadripper chips that can use up to 500 watts are properly supported and not on X399 chips that were on worse Threadripper chips. The potential, at least according to this article, is that AMD might announce this at CES 2019. That's definitely a possibility. We'll have to wait and see until January as to whether or not they're coming out with anything. But you know what? We don't have to wait till January for. Let's talk about AMD GPU rumor news, my friends, because this is some exciting hot news that's coming out. And according to some articles, at least OC3D, they're saying that AMD is rumored to ship 12 nanometer Polaris 30 GPUs in October, which is quite soon. That That is in a month, in case you were wondering. October is next month. So this is based out of Linux driver information from the good friends over at Pharonix showing that there is a new Polaris ID that is coming out. However, whether or not it's 10 nanometers, 12 nanometers, 14 nanometers, eight nanometers, none of that is clear. There's just a butt ton of rumors floating around from the fact that we have a new Linux driver ID. What that means is so unclear. Like you'll see that this this article from PC Games in says that AMD finally may be prepping in a Radeon RX 590. The OC3D article says 12 nanometer Polaris 30 in October. This Chip Hell article uh, forum says 12 nanometer refresh Polaris, which is part of where it's coming from because the Chip Hell forum has released information before that has turned out to be accurate. And then this Tech Power Up article says clues gathering around an AMD Polaris relaunch. And it appears that they might be on TSMC's 12 nanometers, which is the exact same process that Turing is on. However, I don't know whether we should be holding our breath on this. This could just be another OEM refresh like the RX 500 Series X editions were. Yeah, in case you forgot about that, AMD released the RX 580X graphics cards, which is the exact same thing as a 580, just with an updated ID so that they could sell them to OEMs again as a new model because that's what the OEMs require, even though there's nothing new about them. I'm not necessarily very hopeful Hopeful that even if they do release new cards, that it's exactly what we would want them to be. However, it could be AMD seeing an opportunity with what Nvidia did and only releasing the high-end cards at super insane prices. They could come in and drop the price on an RX, let's say 680, make it $200 for a GTX 1070 level performance, which would be amazing. The interesting thing about 12 nanometers is that it should be cheaper than the 14 nanometers that they're currently selling Polaris on. So even if they give us an RX 580 rebadged that's selling at $150, that would still give people a lot of incentive to buy AMD over buying Nvidia. Whether or not this is gonna happen, whether or not anything's gonna come of this, we don't know. It's just rumors right now. But there you go, guys. AMD new GPUs potentially in October. This is the first rumor I'm hearing about it, but interesting news, interesting rumors. What do you all think? Ah, that's gonna wrap it up for all of the hot news that we have today. Let me know what you think about the new AMD graphics cards, EA's crap with Anthem or anything else we talked about. Let sound off down in the comments down below. But let's now talk about Squarespace. I mentioned at the beginning, the video is sponsored by Squarespace. So let's just let's just discuss them because we have been loving them for using them for our website UFD deals. So Squarespace has great customer templates for getting a website set up. Super easy, barely an inconvenience. You can make a professional looking website without having to know how to do anything creatively. Like I can code a website, but I can't make it look good. So Squarespace helps you with that. They have beautiful designer templates that are award winning. And you know what else is award winning? Their customer service. So when you don't know how to do something, you just hit them up 24 seven and they'll respond to you and actually help you solve your problems. Squarespace has got the goods on making sure that you can build your website in the way that you need to. But not only that, that you can do online stores with them. They have marketing tools for you to figure everything out. They have domains, websites, everything that you can get going. You can create a beautiful website with Squarespace's all in one platform. So beautiful templates, beautiful customer support, all in one platform for you to be able to do nearly everything that you would need to do for a website 
We are completely happy with them for UFD deals. Getting a, all of the deals set up every single day is not a problem whatsoever. And if we do want to implement a new feature that we don't know how to do exactly, we just contact them and they walk us through the process because they're geniuses. So head to squarespace.com for your free trial. And when you're ready to check out, you can use the offer code UFD, squarespace.com forward slash UFD to save 10 percent off of your first purchase on a domain or a website 10 percent off no ads on a ufd tech video squarespace is amazing go watch them go support them give them everything that you need go check out squarespace to send 10 percent off of your website on their all-in-one platform you know you're gonna love it i love them so that's gonna wrap it up for the video be sure to hit the like button this this one the thumbs up if you enjoyed the video please get subscribed hit that button get the notification bell so you're aware of when we release videos. And then you're also aware when we don't on Heritage Day. Anyways, I'm Brett with the UFD Tech Channel. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Love you too. Smiling faces, I'll see your smiling faces. Why? I'll see your smiling faces again in the next video.